So this might seem a little bit lazy, but sometimes I get, you know, emails, people ask me for some help, some ideas, some thoughts and stuff. And I say, Hey, that might be a great podcast, or let's maybe talk about it here, talk about the space, because I, I love the idea of having these conversations and talking about some of this stuff and, and wrestling with the ideas on the podcast. Uh, it not only helps that person that's asking for the advice, but it's something that I can learn from too. But I also get a podcast recorded and uh, I wanted to share this. And I think sharing that process of learning is really powerful. And that's why I'm excited about this podcast today with uh, my friend Bradley Lance. Uh, Brad actually uh, is someone I've known for quite a while. And he, he reached out to me talking about uh, wanting to actually write a book. And, you know, I own a publishing company. I've written books myself. And so him and I were talking before, and I always do these little warm ups with people that are on my podcast because I actually asked him like, hey, can you be on my podcast as well? It'd be, you know, kill two birds with one stone. And so uh, we talked about it and I asked him what his book would be about. And he shared it about being about the process of learning. And so I thought, hey, this would be great uh, to actually discuss. So what we did in this podcast is we talked about not only, you know, some of his personal stuff, some of our connections, but we also talked about the idea of writing a book, what that looks like, some tips for doing it. So somebody out there might, you know, be interested in writing a book one day, kind of going through the process. So I share some of the tips on the things I did. Uh, I actually got him to ask some of the questions that he was thinking about, but I want to share with this because I think partially, you know, if you're interested in writing a book, there's something really powerful here, but it's also sharing the process of learning about a book that could be about the process of learning. So what better way to actually do that than, you know, in this space. So I really loved having this conversation. I, I, I work with a lot of people writing a book. And so maybe this is kind of a little bit of behind the scenes of some of the conversations I've had in the past, but I really hope you enjoy it. I, find, I hope you find some benefit out of this, but welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. <laughs> Hey everyone, this is George Kroos. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. And today I'm so blessed to have my friend Brad Lee Lands, who goes by Brad, on the podcast. And uh, Brad and I met years ago. We're actually going to talk in a, in a few seconds about um, our very first time meeting in person, which was a very interesting thing. And uh, it's especially interesting because we're going to talk about uh, that day versus today and how things have changed. Uh, but for those of you who don't know Brad, uh, he is an administrator in uh, the Virginia area. He's the director of technology and innovation. That's and right. I made a word, uh, the dote, right? So I don't know. If, I don't know. You got to, we're in education. We got to acronym everything we can. That's right. right? It's going to stick. It so Brad, it is awesome to to catch up with you today uh, and, and hear about some of the stuff you're doing. And we're going to talk about um, a book that you're looking at, uh, at writing uh, going through that process because I think people would be really interested in kind of just hearing that process and uh, what what you're looking to write about, kind of what you're dealing with as you're kind of going through that. So, Brad, if you could just tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do today, and how you got there, that'd be a great way to start. Great. Well, thanks so much for having me, George. It's great to connect with you after all these years. Um, so, my, yeah, my name is Brad uh, Bradley Lance, but I go by Brad, and uh, I've I've known I've wanted to be an educator, you know, ever since I can remember. Um, I started off as a middle school math and science teacher. Um, and then what we talked about in the podcast earlier was the fact that my principal at the time just asked me to take on some new challenges. And I just kept saying yes, you know, the whole yes and yes and when you think about improv, right? And so it created some awesome opportunities for me. Um, I started teaching career and technical education to middle school uh, students. And then from there, I was a instructional technology coach. And then I got my administration degree in leadership and policy, and I had a choice. I, I wasn't sure what direction I wanted to go, if I wanted to become an assistant principal and kind of try to climb the ladder that way, because um, I ultimately really wanted to be a principal. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, did I want to take technology and kind of run with leadership that way? Um, and there was an awesome opportunity that happened to come my way, and I decided to take the leadership and technology position. And then so that ultimately got me here as a director of technology and innovation. Right. Um, and I do some contracting, consulting here and there, presentations, keynotes. I'm, I'm actually an international keynoter. I have done a keynote in Edmonton. In um, that's right. That's right. Um, right. Got to do the little, got to do the little. Shout out. 
I have a 10 million buttons. But <gasps> and we're going to get to that, but it was actually my first keynote ever uh, oh, was right. in Edmonton. Uh, so that adds to the story too, adds a couple more layers. Um, but I've just always been passionate about teaching and learning and, you know, helping kids succeed. And so um, I'm, I'm just super grateful to be where I am today. Well, that, that is funny that I, I forgot that it was actually your first keynote. Um, yeah. Right. And it was your first keynote. And uh, we won't get into personal news. And I asked Brad if we can talk about this. And like, there's some personal elements that we're going to leave out. Um, but you were, you were not in a good place that day. No. Um, right. When someone, you know, says you hit rock bottom emotionally, I yeah. feel like I hit rock bottom. Yeah. Yeah. And so like, talk, can you tell us a little bit about that? Like talk, talk about the interaction. Cause I like bet you, you were very complimentary. And then, Oh my gosh. Yeah. I've been we, following. We never talked in person. And then yeah. I found out a lot of stuff with you and then yeah. like, and we had a conversation. So tell, tell us a little bit about that. For sure. I'm an open book. Um, no pun intended here, but <laughs> so, um, uh, I had been following you for years on social media. I was a huge follower of your blog, uh, The Principle of Change. And um, when I met you, I was I was kind of in awe. Uh, I looked up to you as, I swear, I looked up to you as like the most influential educator um, that had impacted me. Oh yeah, that. for sure. And I'm not just saying that. I um, it, yeah, I really looked up to you. I still look up to you today, um, mm -hmm. simply because you're taller than me. Um, no, <laughs> no, but it was just awesome being able to see you and meet you in person. But while I was there, um, I actually found out some bad news, right? And so I was in a really low place and and had to do one of the biggest, you know, professional tasks of my career at that point. And I just remember talking with you and you just giving me a bunch of advice and just saying, you know, you you had a really bad experience once and, and yep. you were able to climb out of it and yep. it, it just gave me hope and inspiration. Yeah. And what, what's funny, I actually, so I, I remember saying to you, look, Hey, I, I know this is really hard. I know this is really tough, but in a few years, you're going to look back at this and you, everything will be good and you'll be yeah. fine. I remember actually distinctly saying that too. And like, I've like, I've had that too, right. Where you are just in the worst way. And uh, like, I, this is advice I hear all the time. And I don't want anyone to think it's mine. Uh, so I don't want credit for it. Right. But like you basically survived a hundred up to this point, you survived a hundred percent of the hard days that you've had. Right. Mm -hmm. And I remember talking to you about that and saying like, Hey, this is, this is, this is a temporary thing. You know, it's, it's okay to feel crappy. Right. And, uh, and then, and then watching you, you know, connect with someone, get married, have, you know, have, have, have a kid. Yeah, and I remember like, and I I'll message you every now and then say, remember that one day? Remember yep. when we met? I told you so, right? Because I I am, hey, look, I am not above telling people I told you so. <laughs> oh, I know that for sure because you tell me all the time. <laughs> yeah, and it's good, and it's so nice to see that, and it's great, right? And I'm sure people have that too. So I I wanted people to see that because I guarantee you, somebody, uh, and I know this is like, Hey, what does it have to do with education? Well, maybe, maybe you hate your job. Maybe it sucks. And you're like, you know, it's the worst job you've ever had. And you want to get the hell out of it. And I understand that too. Right. But I think it's, I think I just wanted you to share that Brad, because I think a lot of times we, somebody that's listening to this right now is not necessarily going through the same situation, but going right. through a tough situation and they don't see the, 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 the two, three years from now where it can be really powerful. And I want someone to, to like, know that there is like a, a, a way out. And I actually do remember this. I asked you the next day, and this is a, by the way, for everyone, this is literally the first time we talked, right? First right? time we and met. I actually, I actually think, and I remember you saying this to me. So it was the first time we talked and I was the first person to know you yeah. didn't tell anybody else. No. Right. I remember. And you just like found out, you just found out like, you know, some stuff that you were going through. And then I remember checking in on you the next day and you're like, I crushed my keynote and you're like so pumped. I'm like, all right, we're on day two, right? Like we're, yeah. I remember, I remember thinking that too. So, um, I, I just, I, I just wanted to check cause I know, you know, like we all face like difficult situations for, uh, whatever reasons in our life, but yeah. So I just, I'm, I'm glad you got to connect that. So let's, let's talk, let's jump into the, the, the book, right? So we were sure. talking about the book. So I, I think this would be great. Cause I think Tell me what you're, because this isn't a book that's out, by the way. And this is a book that's in a process, which is like, usually like I have people on here talking about their books that are out and stuff like this. Right. But I actually think this would be the perfect book to talk about that's in the process of being written because like, tell us what the book's about. Yeah. 
so as you said, this is a perfect opportunity to be able to talk about the learning process as I'm going through it, right? Yep. And so I really want to highlight, um, you know, being knowledge able, mm -hmm. where you're focusing on the process, you know, as well as the content, but you're yeah. putting a little bit more emphasis on the learning of the process. Because after you master the process of learning, you know, there's no stopping you. You can learn anything that you put your mind to. You can learn new skills, uh, you know, acquire new information. And I really wanna try to learn more about that in the education space. I wanna think about how we as teachers can help students learn how to learn better and to be able to also take that knowledge and apply it to our own selves as teachers. How can we become better teachers by learning a little bit more about the learning process? Yeah you know, learning about yourself as a learner, knowing your strengths, your growth areas, your your needs and your, you know, your perspectives. And I think it's really helpful. And then yeah. also just as a regular person, right? Just wanting yeah. to be able to accomplish something new in your life. You know, what is it gonna take? How can you learn some different strategies and some tools to be able to learn anything you want? Yeah, and, and that I think like um, I'm trying to remember this quote, and it's from uh, A.G. Giuliani, who's an awesome friend of mine. Oh yeah, launch right. Yeah, and he talked like it, it's like I don't want kids to basically I don't want kids to to learn something, but that they can have the ability to learn anything. Right. And even, even when you're talking about some of the personal aspects of the ups and downs of your process, right? I think part of it too is 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 that kind of going through the ups and downs is part of learning. There's a, a Dimitri Martin uh, image that I've used. I love Dimitri Martin. I, yeah, and it's like, it, it was like, is he, I think he was like a, it was just, is one of it is a book he had written and there's, he does a lot of like drawings and, right. and stuff like that. And he talked about what's, what success looks like or what people think success looks like and what it actually looks like. So he has the first is just a straight line going right. forward. And the other one's like up and down. And I've used that image. I always give credit to Dimitri Martin. Right. And I, I do a little revamp of it. And I just change the word success with learning. And really kind of what does learning look like? And you, you mentioned this this part too. And we talked about this before the podcast. The, the misconception a lot of times is that it's either product or process. Mm. But it's actually both. And I think that that's really uh, powerful. And there is a, uh, I saw John Medina uh, speak at ISTE. Uh, and he's the author of Brain Rules. And he said something that has always stuck out to me. He said it was something along the lines of like content or, or creation without content is the equivalent of playing the air guitar. You might know the motions, but you don't know how to actually play. And it's like, it's kind of that, wow. build, right? So I, th I think that was like a, a really powerful connection because a lot of times, you know, and that's helped me because I'll work, especially at the high school level where, you know, classroom, let's be honest, classes are a lot more content heavy people are like, well, we got to teach this content. I'm like, yeah, I'm not saying don't teach the content, but what, right. are, what are people actually doing with it? Right. And right. I think that, that's kind of like the crux of the innovator's mindset is like, it's going beyond the, the notion of information, but what do you do with that information? That's really powerful. So like when you're, when you're talking about this, and I, I actually kind of want to focus on the process of writing the book. Right. right. So like, when you think about that, like when you're, when, when you have like, what, what's that big question that you're like struggling with? as you are thinking about like how do i how do i make this happen how do i make this book because I, I think a lot of people would be interested in that i really just want to try to organize and make sense of everything that i've learned so far mm -hmm. in my educational career and to be able to um you know find themes and patterns and really try to curate different information, um, strategies, tools, everything that I've ever learned and really try to make sense of it, chew on it for a little bit and try to, you know, put something out there that I can learn from myself and hopefully others will be able to learn from as well and just give them some different touch points to be able to reference and try out for themselves to see if it works. Um, so I have all these ideas that are in my brain and I'm just really just trying to make sense of it and hopefully I'll be able to, um, organize it in my own brain and make it make sense to other people as well. So, so here's, here's, and I, this is why I want to talk about this. Cause like, I, I think we, like, you know, I've written a few books and I'm kind right. of like listening to you. I'm like, okay, so what did I do? Cause I had the same issue, right? Like I had a ton of ideas. And what I, what I first started doing is I actually, I know this is going to seem like really simple. I just made a Google doc. And I'm like, what are the biggest, most important things I want to share in this book? Right? Mm. Like maybe it's a really important idea. 
maybe it's important, uh, st- like a really powerful story, things like that. So I just made a Google doc and I wrote those things out. Right. I just wrote, you know, kind of, it was just like a general thing. But as I started like putting the chapters together, uh, I would actually like say like, here's what I want to talk about. And then I would actually go look at that main Google doc and say, where, what, which one of these things fits here? Right. Mm. Like which one fits in this, this topic, this, this idea of what I'm, I'm sharing in the strategy. And I would actually, um, I would actually have, uh, like a, a, a separate Google doc for each chapter. And I would just write notes. I would just write notes here and there. And then eventually I would actually just start writing and like, look, did I address this? I do this. And then once I like, like put them in a chapter, then I would actually go back to the original Google doc. And then I would just do like strike through text to make sure that, and then I would like say like, Hey, use this in chapter four, use this in chapter five. And it was like a good way to kind of go through this. Now I am like, people know this about me. I am a super fast book writer. So like I have, there's no book that I've written. So I've written three that wasn't done in within three weeks. Right? Wow. And the part of the reason is because I can't handle myself while writing a book. <laughs> because once I get into that flow of like, I'm writing this, I cannot stop thinking about it. Can't turn it off. Yep. It, cannot, it just, and it's like, will kill me. That's what it feels like is that um, it's just the ideas are just percolating. And I'll just like, it's, it's like in my head and it's uh, like, I'll wake up in the middle of the night. And that's a, that's a, one of the things I love about, you know, some of these digital tools, like my phone's beside the bed, I grab yeah. my phone and then I'll be like, find that chapter of like this idea or this idea in the middle of the night. Cause I, I and then sometimes I'm like, Oh my God, I, what, what the heck was going on in the middle of the night? Like, I have no idea what that I was saying. Right. Cause you know, you've ever had those ideas. You're like, Oh my oh, God, yeah. like the best idea. And what but I then you forget it by the morning. And so yeah. I would just get up and write it. And what I love about you sharing that story is the process of learning. Like that makes sense to you, right? That process. And it makes sense to me too, because it's logical, but my process might look entirely different. Right. And if you were to, you know, put that on paper, like you said, Dimitri Martin did what what success looks like, it's not going to be a straight line, right? It's going to be a bird's nest. Probably. It reminds me of um, that book, Orbiting the Giant Hairball, if you've ever read that, which is really awesome. Um, But it's something that I call um, the landscape of learning, right? What does that landscape actually look like for you and and your journey, your learning journey? If you were to plot that out, right, what does that look like? Your highs and lows, your peaks, your valleys, um, everyone's landscape of learning looks completely different um, based on the process they do. Um, But it makes it also unique and valuable. So, okay, so here's like a a, like I'm going to I'm curious about your thoughts on this question. So. You you probably as you're writing this book, you you obviously want people to take away something from it right that's my goal yeah but but then but then it's kind of weird because but then it's like is like you don't want people to take an end product necessarily so what like like because then it kind of goes against your book right like i think a lot of times like when i wrote innovators mindset my hope was it wasn't that i was giving the solutions but i gave you the the ability to figure out your own yeah like I, that's you know and so like when you when like someone picks this book up, you know, goes through this process, reads the thing, you know, what, what do you hope at the end of the day that they they walk away from this book? And I know, and and like, you know, we both know this, that experience for everyone is going to be different based on where they're at, what experiences they already have, um, you know, what things they want to get out of it. But like, what, what would be like a big hope for, for people through that process? Yeah. I hope people walk away after reading this book. Mm -hmm with the hope that they can learn anything, with the belief in themselves that they can achieve anything Mm -hmm. and that they'll be able to have some tools of different strategies to be able to help them reach those goals. Um, So the difference between, you know, the psychological benefits, the emotional benefits and the physical Mm -hmm. benefits of being able to package all that together and just take away um, some sort of confidence um, that will give them some support and guidance along the way of their own learning journey. Yeah. And and so tell me like when you're, when you're talking about this stuff and you're going through this in your role right now and with your staff, what are some ways that you do that today? Like you do the stuff that you're, you're talking about that you want to write about your book. Like what's like a, like, what's like a, 
a practical idea that, you know, an educator that's listening to this right now would say like, Hey, here's something I can do right now with my students that would, you know, develop these skills in my kids. Yeah. And so, um, the idea of my book, I call it knowledge able, right. Separating yeah. with a hyphen focusing on the able part, right. The, mm. the ability and the process. Um, I, I decided to create an acronym. And so, um, what I like to do is start off with a, which is first of all, just ask a question. Right. Mm -hmm. And that starts everything from there. You're going to want to believe in yourself, right. To be able to have the curiosity to overcome fearlessness, anything else that might be standing in your way, um, making sure you believe in yourself that you can answer this question or you can solve this problem. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it's leveraging resources. And I try to provide some type of resource that might be able to connect um, with each person. I provide a plethora of resources, lots of different ideas. Um, and some people might not even want to leverage resources. Some people mm -hmm. don't like structure, right? But I want to be able to provide options if you are someone you know that does like that kind of structure and scaffolding to your learning. And then finally, just execute the task, practice, receive feedback, mm -hmm. reflect, and, you know, continue that process. We always think that, you know, once you learn something, it stops. But in reality, the more questions you have, the more curious you get. And the more mm -hmm. curious you get, the more questions you have. It's cyclical, right? And so um, focusing on that process of being able to learn anything that you put your mind to, I think is a, that's a takeaway that people can have. So I got I to ask you this because like I, I, I feel like I ask a lot of questions. Yeah. I'm a very curious person. And I feel the more curious be I become, the, the dumber I become as well. Because really? I do. I do in many ways because you start realizing how much you don't know. I, I actually here, here's like a, this 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 blew my mind. I remember I was uh, dating someone a long, long time ago and uh, her brother was like probably the smartest uh, person with technology I've ever met in my life. He had like offers from like Google, Microsoft to work. He's like just coming to college and I was like doing, you know, stuff in technology and and I, I, like he just blew my mind with all the stuff he knew. And I, I remember saying to him, I'll never forget this. It was such, it was like just a weird moment. I said, okay, so like out of 10, how good are you at technology? He's like, yeah, like a six. I was like, you're a six. You're telling me you're a six. Like you're probably the smartest person that I know with technology. And he's like, he goes, well, the, you know, I understand what you're saying, but I know the stuff that I know, but there's so many things out there that I've never used that I never, you know, I don't, how could I possibly know those things? Right. Until I actually utilize them. So like, I'm still learning. And I, and then I, I thought like, that's like, a, that's like, that just made you even more of a 10 <laughs> out of 10 in my answer, because it was such a good answer. Right. Cause yeah. it is too, right. Like there's, there's so many things that we do know currently, but once you start realizing and you start asking questions, you start realizing how much you actually don't know and you can still explore like that's why there is no end point with this stuff right I think that's what's beautiful about it but i like i'll, I'll never forget that conversation because i was like wow that was like the weirdest answer because it was like so profound like it wasn't just like wow. a, i was just like yeah I, like yeah i'm a 10 and i had this for this conversation but he like just like made me realize how smart he was because he realized that he was so smart that there are so many things out there that he hasn't had the opportunity to explore which wow. really kind of blew my mind. Yeah, it's all in perspective, right? It's all relative. Right. Right. So that's why that's why like when I'm like, yeah, I'm like realizing how much I don't know, right? Wow. I love that. Yeah, it 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 really it really it really pushed my thinking. So we talked about this and I'm kind of putting you on the spot here. Sure. I'm, I'm also putting you on the spot because I'm this is like my way of making sure you're accountable to this. Oh. We talked about what would be really powerful because you, the reason why we were talking about this is you haven't written the book. Like you've written some of it, right? You're kind of going through the process. So I said, Hey, if you're talking about the process, why not actually share the process of a book about the process of learning, you know, publicly. Right. So like, as you think about that, what are some ways that you could maybe kind of, you know, bring community in, you know, uh, like have people see the visibility of what you're doing. Is there some ways that you thought about since we, we talked, I know we only talked about like 25 minutes ago. Yeah, no so. problem. Um, yeah. You gave me some really good things to think about. Um, I do have a blog. It's called the landscape of learning.com and I've written there for a while, but um, you know, due to the pandemic, I, I kind of stopped and, and just mm -hmm. decided to focus on my family and, and really reflect on things that mattered mm -hmm. to me uh, that were really important at that particular time. But, you know, with this book idea coming up, it, it's really inspired me to continue writing 
again. So um, I, I want to put some ideas out there on my blog. I want to um, post on social media, particularly Twitter for me, because that's where I use my professional um, social media. But I also want to share it with family and friends. You know, uh, they, I want to share it with people whose opinions really matter to me. Yeah. I mean, everyone's opinion is great, but you know, the people that I find most important and the people who I really look up to are the opinions that matter the most to me. And they might not have a, a background in education, right? But everyone you will ever meet knows something that you don't. Yeah. I think Bill Nye said that, right? Yeah. And so you can always gain new perspectives and makes you think about things differently. And, you know, to have a perspective outside of education could be really helpful too. Um, so I really just want to try to put stuff out there, see what sticks and um, get feedback. Um, I'm, I'm very receptive to feedback. I think it's part of the learning process, right? Yeah. And so um, I'm excited to, to try to put some stuff out there and um, get some different responses. And hopefully I'll be able to refine some of my content based on what people think about it. Yeah. And the, like a lot, um, I remember, uh, you know, a couple of my books, somebody said to me, like, oh, I read that in the blog. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, do you think I'm like trying to hide right. my ideas, right? And just stay in with this. And I think part of it too is that I, I wrote the ideas out because that's how you, you know, and it's like, uh, there's a, a great, I think it's Clive uh, Thompson. I, I shared this quote in uh, Innovator's Mindset. He said, anyone can win an argument inside their head, but when mm. you have to face an audience, you have to be truly convincing. And, that's so true. And, and it's it was such a powerful quote because it really made me think about you know, when I put stuff out there, it makes me think about the perspectives that I might be missing and yeah. really kind of that because and I, we were talking about this before. I do my best to um, not get co like comments um, against what I'm saying yeah. because I try to address them before before I finish the post. Right. So I always talk about this was what's called a 360 perspective that like, OK, what am I missing here and how do I address it before? It's addressed mm -hmm. in the Ooh. comments. And, that, and yep. it's not actually, it's not actually like I'm not open to comments, but I am I am using that open reflection process where I'm trying to think about like what's the argument against what I'm saying? And yeah. how do I actually think about this ahead of time? Which I actually think is something is that is really powerful about this. But uh in my keynotes, uh the presentations that I do, here's something that people say, like, oh, I love when you talked about this today. I remember reading about in your blog. Nothing will ever go into a keynote or a presentation I do that I haven't written about first. That and makes sense, yeah. I think part of it is because it I, I've thought about it really deeply because I've known I've shared it publicly. And I, I just feel once it actually gets to that space where I'm actually posting it publicly, it just becomes part of me. It becomes part of my brain. It becomes part yeah. of who I am. I think that's, you know, I think that's a really powerful process for me. So I'm so, going to ch challenge you on something real quick. Sure. And so um, talking about making arguments, right? Um, yeah. Someone someone told me something a long time ago, or I, I read something and talking about the process of learning, right? Um, especially talking about politics and religion and things that people just can't yeah. agree on. They talked about instead of... You people know, don't agree on those things? I know, right? Unbelievable. They said, instead of thinking of it as an argument where you're trying to prove yourself right, you know, think about these as discussions where both parties are trying to mean. learn. That was me who said that. Was it you? <laughs> it's in my, yeah. It's a, well, this is where I, well, I posted my blog. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well then, um, yeah, that's really stuck with me. I, I promise that was not a softball. I, I <laughs> it really make, I, I think about that all the time. Right. Yeah. And okay. so it, it really is profound. <laughs> I swear. Um, that's so funny. Yeah. That that's unbelievable. Well, they, they actually, so, okay. So let's just go back. So it wasn't so, and I, I do like, I am notorious for this. I re, I always joke that I, Oh, I finished reading the internet today. Right. Like, right? I, like I read so much stuff. Yeah. And I remember like, but I always can't remember. So I just said, I read that. So I read that somewhere and put it on my blog, but I couldn't remember where it from, but I, I never want, even when, if I can't remember, I just want to make sure people know it's not mine. Right? Yo, sure. Yeah. So it was that part of it. Uh, and there's like, um, a Dale Carnegie quote, and I've used it a lot. Um, it's, it's basically, you can never win an argument because when you lose an argument, you've lost the argument, but when you win an argument, you also have taken away the dignity of the other person who mm. like is no better right and really think so about true. discussions yeah um, there is something about what you said about the politics and religion thing and i and yeah. i i, I, I want to share this real quickly uh there was something i read uh again not mine 
and it really <laughs> stuck with me. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm older. I'm 40. I'm in, I'm in my late forties. I'm close oh, to you're 50, young. 40. Right. But it, it was, so it was like an interesting comment and it, and it was, you know, when we were kids, we were talk, do not talk politics and religion with strangers. Right. And I, I don't know if you, if you were ever taught that we lived in, you know, different areas of the world, but, but you've heard that saying before. Oh, right? for sure. Yeah. So what it said, it said, we should have never been taught that. What we should have been taught is how do we talk about politics and religion in a civil manner with strangers? Yep. And I was like, that, that's a really powerful thing, right? Because it is, it is conversation. The civility right? is the challenging right? part for most people, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And that, I think that's, you know, like those conversations, like, and I think, you know, I, I, I appreciate the passion and stuff like that too. But um, I, I, I think a lot of times, and for me, what I always try to think about is like, like at the end of the day, the, the conversation, if I think you, for, especially in education, right? When we're talking about stuff, I always try to remember like, hey, are, are both of us might have different perspectives, but are both of us focused on doing what's best for kids? And if we're, if we're doing that, then I can listen to, you know, now if you say like, I hate kids, <laughs> then we're not, maybe not going to have a good conversation. Right, right. right? That's, a, that's a totally different thing. But I, I just thought that was really powerful. So here, here's the last thing I'm going to ask you. Sure. Um, so the process of learning. Yeah. So we, when we first met, you know, you're having a rough time and then, you know, you, things are good. Right. And like, uh, there's like lots of reasons, like things are good. Who knows what's going to happen in five years. Right. Things go right. bad. It's just, but that's the ups and downs. That's up and down in life. So you look at yourself five years from now, what, when you think of yourself five years now, what is the hope that you see five years from now? Maybe it's personal, maybe it's professional, maybe it's both. Like what, when the first thing that comes to your mind, cause I always, I always, uh, I've been asking myself this question yeah. a lot lately. What would t George 10 years from now think about this decision? Now, that's, that's something I've been really talking about and thinking about. So like, I'll, I'll, I'll even shorten the time for you. Five years from now, Brad, yep. what, what, what are they, what, what are they going to see? I don't know what they're going to see, mm -hmm. but it's more about what I want to feel. Right. I want to continue feeling happy and successful. And if I can feel happy and successful, I think, um, you know, that goes a long way in terms of having a quality life. And mm -hmm. so that might look different, but as long as I can feel that, I think that is going to be what's most important for me. Well, I'm, I'm excited for this process for you, my friend, because uh, I've watched you grow professionally, personally. I've been able to see that. Uh, and it's kind of cool to see, you know, how you're thinking about that in a book. And I, I know you're going to share a lot of great stories on that. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you reached out today. We could record this podcast. I hope, you know, people... Um, Best thing, check out Brad. Uh, you'll see his Twitter handle in the detail in the description down below. But thanks, dude, for being on the podcast. It's, it's great to catch up. Hey, thanks so much, George. Great to see you. And hopefully, we can catch another basketball game sometime yeah, soon. That'd be great. Now you can sit <laughs> behind me again, right? <laughs> right. Have a wonderful day. Thanks.